Yo, what's good? Welcome back to Channel Black. United States Federal Court, Southern District of New York. Rodney Jones v. Sean Combs, Justin Dior Combs, Ethiopia Haptamariam, Lucian Charles Grange, Christina Coram, Chalice Recording Studios, Love Records, Plaintiff Rodney Lil Rod Jones. Mr. Jones hereby alleges as and for his complaint against defendant Sean Combs, Mr. Combs, defendant Justin Dior Combs, J. Combs, defendant Lucian Charles Grange, Mr. Grange, defendant Ethiopia Haptamariam, M.S. Haptamariam, defendant Christina Coram, M.S. Coram, defendant Chalice Recording Studios, C.R.S., defendant Love Records, L.R., defendant Motown Records, M.S. Sir, defendant Universal Music Group, E.N.G., jurisdiction, and venue. 1. This court has personal jurisdiction over the defendants under and consistent with the constitutional requirements of due process in that the defendants, acting directly or through his agents or apparent agents, committed one or more of the following. A. The transaction of any business within the state. B. The making of any contract within the state. C. The commission of a tortious act within this district. And D. The ownership, use, or possession of any real estate in this state. 2. From September 2022 to the date of this filing, defendants have consistently and purposefully availed themselves of the privilege of conducting activities within New York, thus invoking the benefits and protections of New York law. In return for these benefits and protections, defendants must submit to the burdens of litigation in New York. 3. This litigation arises from or relates to the tortious activities defendants visited upon. Defendants in the states of New York, California, Florida, and the United States Virgin Island. This tortious conduct violated United States federal RICO laws. 4. Requiring defendants to litigate these claims in this district does not offend traditional notions of fair play and substantial justice. Plaintiffs' claims arise from some conduct occurring by defendants in New York. Parties. 5. Plaintiff Rodney Jones is an American artist and music producer. Mr. Jones resides in the states of New York and California. 6. Defendant Sean Combs is a rapper and record executive popularly known by his stage names. Puff Daddy, Puffy, P. Diddy, Diddy, Brother Love or Love. Mr. Combs came to fame in the early 1990s with his record label Bad Boy Records. He rose to prominence in the music and entertainment industry over the decades and is regularly referred to as a hip-hop mogul. Mr. Combs resides at Defendant Sean Combs. 7. Defendant Justin Dior Combs is the son of Mr. Combs and Misa Hilton. Jay Combs was born on December 30, 1993. Jay Combs is a producer and actor. He has appeared on TV series like Catfish, The TV Show, Wild and Out, and Hip Hop Squares. Defendant Justin Dior Combs resides at 1000. Defendant Lucien Charles Grange is the CEO of Defendant Universal Music Group. Defendant Lucien Charles Grange resides at 53,000. Defendant Ethiopia Habtamariam is the former CEO of Defendant Motown Records, the parent company of Defendant Love Records. Defendant Christina Coram is the chief of staff to Sean Diddy Combs, Combs Global Enterprises. She resides at 10,000. Defendant Motown Records is a record label with Defendant Universal Music Group is a record label with the principal place of Defendant Love Records is a record label with a Defendant Combs Enterprises is a diverse portfolio of businesses and investments that includes music, fashion, Rodney Lil Rod Jones, 16, Rodney Lil Rod Jones Jr. is from the Windy City, Chi Town. He was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. Mr. Jones is the second oldest son and fourth child out of nine siblings. Mr. Jones comes from a long line of gospel music influencers. 17. Mr. Jones started playing instruments at the age of five. He began playing drums in church. And at the age of 13, he picked up playing the guitar. From 13 to present, Mr. Jones is considered a musical prodigy. His talents have led him to produce and create a commercial marketplace for music that has been recorded by some of the most prestigious and highly acclaimed artists in music history. 19. Throughout the duration of his career, Mr. Jones has worked the south side of Chicago music. Scene, playing with the following legendary greats, Georgia Mass Choir, Donald Lawrence, 
the Clark sisters and the Smoky Norfolk. 20. On or about August 2022, Mr. Jones received a call from Mr. Combs requesting that he produce several songs on a rhythm and blues album titled The Love Album, Off the Grid, Love Album. 21. Mr. Jones agreed, and his life has been detrimentally impacted ever since. Summary of events. 22. From September 2022 to November 2023, Mr. Jones produced nine songs on Mr. Combs' love album. 23. Mr. Jones lived with Mr. Combs for months at a time, spending holidays, birthdays, and missing major family events. 24. Mr. Jones resided at Mr. Combs' residence located in Los Angeles, California, New York City, and Miami, Florida. Mr. Jones also spent several weeks on a yacht rented by Mr. Combs in the U.S. Virgin Islands. 25. Throughout his time with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones witnessed, experienced, and endured many things that went far beyond his role as a producer on the Love Album. 26. The claims raised in this complaint have been corroborated through witness statements, video audio recordings, and images that Mr. Jones has in his possession. 27. Mr. Combs required Mr. Jones to record him constantly. On several occasions, Mr. Combs took Mr. Jones' cell phone and began recording himself. As a result, Mr. Jones has secured hundreds of hours of footage and audio recordings of Mr. Combs, his staff, and his guests engaging in serious illegal activity. 28. Mr. Jones has secured irrefutable evidence of a. the acquisition, use, and distribution of ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms. b. the displaying and distribution of unregistered illegal firearms, Mr. Combs providing laced alcoholic beverages to minors and sex workers at his homes in California, New York, the U. S. Virgin Islands, and Florida. D. Mr. Cohn's chief of staff, Christina Corum, take a, instructing her staff to retrieve drugs so she can provide it to Mr. Combs for his consumption. E. Christian Combs drugging and sexually assaulting a woman too. F. Mr. Combs detailing how he planned to leverage his relationship with Bishop T.D. Jake's to soften the impact on his public image of Cassie Ventura's lawsuit. G. Young Miami's cousin, and or assistant sexually assaulting Mr. Jones. H. Actor Cuba Gooding Jr. Sexually harassing and assaulting Mr. Jones. I. Rapper 3 redacted on Mr. Combs' yacht, consorting with underaged girls, sex, workers, and J. Ranby Singer 4 redacted in Mr. Combs' Los Angeles home consorting with underaged girls and sex workers. Chalice Recording Studio Shooting. 29. On or about September 12, 2022, Mr. Combs held a writer's and producer's camp at Chalice. Recording studio present at this camp were Mr. Combs, his son Justin Combs, and Justin's friend named G, 31. Mr. G is a 30-year-old tall African-American male, 32. In addition to these individuals, other musicians were present at the camp. This writer has spoken to several musicians who attended the camp, 33. One evening during, during this camp, Mr. Combs, J. Combs, and G. were in a heated conversation. 34. That conversation was moved out of the studio and into a restroom adjacent to where Mr. Jones was sitting. 35. Mr. Jones was approximately two feet away from the bathroom when gunshots rang out. Mr. When this writer spoke with several employees of the yacht, rented by Mr. Combs in the U.S. Virgin Islands who personally witnessed defendant Coram instruct her staff, Brendan Paul, Frankie Santella, and Moy Bond spike bottles of champagne with ecstasy. Two, a complaint is forthcoming. Three, he is a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. Four, he is a Grammy Award winning Ramp B singer who had trouble with law enforcement after assaulting a Bajan billionaire. Th Mr. Jones immediately went into a state of shock and feared that he would be shot next. Mr. Jones genuinely believed that he would be shot through the door due to how close he was. 37. After the shooting ended, a crowd gathered around the restroom. 38. When the door finally opened, Mr. Combs and J. Combs exited. 39. G.G. was lying on the restroom floor in a fetal position, holding his stomach and bleeding out of his leg hip area. 40. Everyone stood around looking upon G. Frustrated by the lack of aid to G., Mr. Jones dropped everything, ran to G.G., 
and immediately began placing pressure on Ji's gunshot wound to his stomach. 41. As he was applying pressure on his stomach, Mr. Jones realized that Ji was gushing blood from another area near his leg hip. 42. He decided to lift Ji and placed him to sit on the toilet. Mr. Jones asked the crowd to call the ambulance. 43. Mr. Jones lifted G and brought him to the ambulance at the studio's front. At this time, Mr. Combs and Justin disappeared to another part of the studio. 44. Mr. Combs gave strict instructions to inform the police that he had nothing to do with the shooting. He also forced Mr. Jones to lie to the police by telling them that G was shot standing outside the studio by a drive-by assailant. 45. Mr. Jones has several corroborating witnesses who spoke with this writer anonymously due to fear of retaliation from Mr. Combs. They have agreed to speak publicly when subpoenaed. 46. Mr. Jones has the clothing he wore that day and believes it may still have the stains and DNA of Gigi's blood. 47. The following are screenshots of the aftermath of the restroom where G was shot by either Mr. Combs or J. Combs. Aftermath of the shooting of G. 48. Clearly, G was not shot outside of the studio as Mr. Combs instructed his team to report to law enforcement. 49. Mr. Combs and defendants LR, MR, UMG, and CRS provided private security for the writers. Camp at defendants CRS. 50. The security was porous and lackluster at best. 51. The fact that either Mr. Combs and J. Combs were allowed to enter CRS with guns and those guns were not confiscated by security is a clear breach of duty by Mr. Combs, defendants L.R., Mr. and U.M.G. to protect Mr. Jones and the other attendees of this writer's camp. 52. As a result of this shooting, Mr. Jones is severely traumatized. Mr. Jones now suffers from PTSD, severe anxiety, depression, and insomnia. Mr. Jones was sexually harassed and assaulted by Mr. Combs 53. Throughout his time living with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones was the victim of constant unsolicited and unauthorized groping and touching of his anus by Mr. Combs. 54. These events took Louisiana Ace in LA, New York, Florida, and the United States Virgin Islands. 55. In addition to the unsolicited and unauthorized touching, Mr. Jones was forced by Mr. Combs to work in Mr. Combs' bathroom as Mr. Combs walked around naked and showered in a clear glass enclosure. 56. As a heterosexual Christian man, Mr. Jones was uncomfortable with Mr. Combs' advances and expressed his discomfort to Mr. Combs' chief of staff, Christina Corum, KK, 57. KK responded to Mr. Jones' complaint with, you know, Sean will be Sean, 58. KK also attempted to downplay Mr. Combs' groping of Mr. Jones' anus and genitals as friendly, horseplay, stating that those acts were Mr. Combs' way of showing that he likes you, Mr. Jones. 59. Despite these assurances, on several occasions when Mr. Combs began to undress and walk around his house naked, KK would say, okay, I am leaving now, and she would disappear. 60. KK's hypocrisy is breathtaking at best, or enabling at worst. 61. Mr. Jones believes that KK aided and abetted Mr. Combs' sexual assault of him and was working with Mr. Combs to groom him into accepting a homosexual relationship. 62. Through these sexually deviant acts, one would say Mr. Combs has a pattern and practice of engaging in such nefarious activity. This ongoing conduct shows that Mr. Combs cannot be rehabilitated. Mr. Combs attempted to groom Mr. Jones into engaging in gay sex 63. Mr. Combs was aware that Mr. Jones looked up to and idolized music producer Stephen Aaron, Jordan, Stevie J, 64. Stevie J is an American DJ, record producer, and television personality. 65. Stevie J was part of the Bad Boy Records production team The Hitmen. 66. In 1997, Stevie J won a Grammy Award for his work on Puff Daddy's debut album. 67. Throughout the late 1990s, Stevie J produced for several artists including Mariah Carey, Tevin, Campbell, The Notorious Big, Joe Dacey, Faith Evans, Jays, and Eve. 68. Stevie J was one of the producers on the Love Album. 69. 
Mr. Combs used access to Stevie J and his knowledge of Mr. Jones' admiration of Stevie J to groom and entice Mr. Jones to engage in homosexuality. 70. Mr. Combs went so far as to share a video of Stevie J anally penetrating a Caucasian male without a condom. This was done to ease Mr. Jones's anxiety concerning homosexuality. According to Mr. Combs, this is a normal practice in the music industry. Look, even Stevie J is doing it. 71. Mr. Combs informed Mr. Jones that he had engaged in sexual intercourse with rapper. Redacted. Ranby Singer 6. Redacted. And Stevie J. Mr. Combs promised to make sure that Mr. Jones wins producer of the year at the Grammys. If he engaged in homosexuality. 73. The following are screenshots of the video 7 of Stevie J annually penetrating a Caucasian male that Mr. Combs provided to Mr. Jones. 5. He is a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. 6. He performed at the Super Bowl and had a successful Vegas residency. 7. This writer is in possession of the video and will provide a copy to the court. Thanksgiving 2022. Mr. Jones is sexually assaulted by Young Miami's cousin. 74. On Thanksgiving Day 2022, Mr. Jones was in Mr. Combs' house located in Miami, Florida. Young Miami and her female cousins were also present. 75. Mr. Combs was intoxicated and offered cocaine to Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones rejected him and proceeded to walk to the restroom. 76. While using the restroom, Young Miami's cousin burst into the bathroom and began groping. Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones believes that Mr. Combs sent her in there to sexually assault Mr. Jones. 77. As she entered the bathroom, she dropped to her knees and began performing oral sex on Mr. Jones' exposed penis. Mr. Jones pushed her away and exited the bathroom. 78. Young Miami's cousin did not accept Mr. Jones' rejection as she proceeded to follow Mr. Jones out of the bathroom. 79. She started undressing and attempted to straddle him and have sex with him in the presence of Mr. Combs and his staff. 80. Once again, Mr. Jones pushed her off. The following are images from a video aid of young Miami, her cousin, Mr. Jones, and Mr. Combs. Mr. Jones and Mr. Combs on Thanksgiving Day, right before Mr. Combs invites Mr. Jones into the restroom and attempted to force him to take cocaine. Young Miami and her female cousin who sexually assaulted Mr. Jones on Thanksgiving Day 2022, Trafficking and Victims Protection Act, 81. Throughout his time with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones was transported from California to New York, Florida, and the United States Virgin Islands, 82. During this time, Mr. Jones was forced to solicit sex workers and perform sex acts to the pleasure of Mr. Combs, 83. On or about February 4, 2023, Mr. Combs forced Mr. Jones to bring prostitutes and sex workers back to his home in Miami, Florida. Eat this writer is in possession of the video and will provide a copy to the court. The sex workers that Mr. Combs forced Mr. Jones to bring back to his home 84. On or about February 2, 2023 incident, Mr. Jones believes Mr. Combs drugged him. Mr. Jones recalls waking up naked, dizzy, and confused. He was in bed with two sex workers and Mr. Combs. He also recalls aimlessly wandering around the house with no clothes on. Sex workers in Mr. Jones' bed the morning after being drugged, 85. On another occasion in Miami, Florida, on Thanksgiving night of 2022, Mr. Combs asked Mr. Jones and DeForest Taylor to enter the studio bathroom, 86. He asked them for a $100 bill because he wanted them to do cocaine with him. 87. Mr. Jones was scared, but luckily, he didn't have a $100 bill, so Mr. Combs waited a little later to do coke with young Miami. 88. Later that evening, he required Mr. Jones to solicit sex workers from Booby Trap on the River, located at 3,615 NWS River Doctor, Miami, Florida 33,142. Mr. Jones did so and Mr. Combs forced him to engage in unsolicited sex acts with these workers. Booby trap on the river. 89. As part of Mr. Jones' sex worker recruitment tools, Mr. Combs provided Mr. Jones with an exclusive bad boy baseball cap and required him to wear it to booby trap on the river as a signal to any sex worker he approached that Mr. Combs was in town 
and had sent Mr. Jones to recruit them. 90. Mr. Jones had no desire to visit Booby Trap on the river. Mr. Jones had no desire to solicit sex workers from Booby Trap on the river. Mr. Combs used his power and influence to intimidate and force Mr. Jones into soliciting sex workers from Booby Trap on the river. As detailed below, Mr. Combs used many tactics to maintain dominion and control of Mr. Jones. 91. Apparently, these workers were accustomed to servicing Mr. Combs and would know that he is in town by the sight of the bad boy's baseball cap. 92. The following are Instagram profiles of two of the sex workers that Mr. Combs required Mr. Jones to solicit and have sex with at his home in Miami, Florida. 93. Mr. Jones had no desire to solicit and or have sex with the individuals in the previous paragraph. Mr. Combs used his power and influence to intimidate and force Mr. Jones into soliciting and sleeping with these women. 94. The following is the phone number of another sex worker that Mr. Combs required Mr. Jones to solicit and perform sex acts with at his home in Miami, Florida. 95. Mr. Jones had no desire to solicit and or have sex with the individual in the previous paragraphs. Mr. Combs used his power and influence to intimidate and force Mr. Jones into soliciting and sleeping with the individuals above. 96. Mr. Combs used many tactics to maintain dominion and control of Mr. Jones. He promised him a Grammy for producer of the year for the Love Album. He offered him $250,000 to purchase all the instruments he wanted. He promised him ownership of his $20 million property, One Star Island, in Miami, Florida. He promised access to record label executives like defendants Lucian Charles Grange and Ethiopia Haptamarium. 97. Mr. Combs would often switch up his approach. He would go from promising Mr. Jones the world to threatening Mr. Jones with physical harm. Mr. Combs threatened to eat Mr. Jones' face and informed Mr. Jones that he is willing to kill his mother, Janice Combs, if he must in order to get what he wants, so he wouldn't think twice to harm Mr. Jones. Mr. Combs and Jay. Combs solicits drugs and engages in illicit sex, acts with minors and sex workers. 98. On or about July 2nd, 2023, in California, Mr. Combs had a listening party at his home. The 99. Present at this party was a Ran B artist 9, redacted, J. Combs, sex workers, and some underage girls. 100. The event began at 7 p.m. Mr. Combs requested female sex workers and required Mr. Jones to solicit them. An hour later, several sex workers appeared. 101. In addition to sex workers, there were at least five women in the crowd that were under the age of 16. 102. Mr. Combs forced all the women to drink laced Delian liquor. Upon information and belief, Mr. Combs laced the liquor with ecstasy. 103. Mr. Combs did not check the identification of any of these underage girls. 104. The presence of these underage women made Mr. Jones very uncomfortable. 105. He attempted to leave, and Mr. Combs forced him to stay. 106. Mr. Combs went so far as to take Mr. Jones's car keys to prevent him from leaving. 107. After being forced to drink Lace Dillian shots, Mr. Jones began feeling lightheaded and recalls passing out and waking up at 4 a.m. the following morning naked with a sex worker sleeping next to him. 108. Screenshots of a video from that night is embedded below. 9. 9. He is a Grammy Award-winning Ranby singer who had trouble with law enforcement after assaulting a Bajan billionaire. 10. This writer is in possession of the video and will provide a copy to the court. Mr. Mr. Combs with an underage female. Underage female sex worker. Justin Combs with an underage female. Mr. Combs attempts to pass off Mr. Jones to Cuba Gooding Jr. 109. Mr. Jones believes that Mr. Combs was grooming him to pass him off to his friends. 110. This fear became reality when Mr. Combs introduced Mr. Jones to Cuba Gooding Jr. Well, they were on Mr. Combs' yacht. 111. During the introduction, Mr. Combs suggested that Cuba get to know Mr. Jones better. He then left them alone in a makeshift studio on the yacht. Mr. Combs and Cuba Gooding Jr., moments before Mr. Jones is assaulted, 112, as evidenced by a video, of which screenshots are embedded below, 
Cuba Gooding Jr., began touching, groping, and fondling Mr. Jones' legs, his upper inner thighs near his groin, the small of his back near his buttocks and his shoulders. 113. Mr. Jones was extremely uncomfortable and proceeded to lean away from Mr. Gooding Jr. 114. He rejected his advances and Mr. Gooding Jr. did not stop until Mr. Jones forcibly pushed him away. The following is a screenshot 11 of the encounter with Cuba Gooding Jr. 11. This writer is in possession of the video and will provide a copy to the court. Cuba Gooding Jr. Forcibly touching Mr. Jones on Mr. Combs' yacht, the love album. 115. Throughout his time with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones was under an implied work for hire. Agreement. 116. He was not compensated for his time living with Mr. Combs or for the songs he produced. 117. As evidence, he was listed as a producer for the following songs on the Love Album's final. Release. Deliver Me. Stay PT1. Reaching. What's Love? Stay a while. Moments. Need somebody. Homecoming. And Tough Love. 118. Mr. Combs and Defendants LR. Mr. UMG. All benefited from Mr. Jones's work product. 119. They failed to compensate Mr. Jones for his work. 120. As a result, Mr. Combs and defendants LR, MR, UMG were all unjustly enriched at the expense of Mr. Jones. 121. Mr. Jones attempted to work with Mr. Combs to secure his publishing and royalty rights for the work he completed on the Love Album. Mr. Combs only offered Mr. Jones $29,000 for 13 months, thousands of hours of work, and nine songs that made it to the Love Album. Ironically, Mr. Jones was willing to take $50,000, his publishing and royalties. Mr. Combs' self-serving greed would not allow him to pay 13 Mr. Jones an additional $21,000. 12 Mr. Gooding Jr. has a storied history of sexually assaulting and forcibly touching individuals against their will. Mr. Combs' deceptive business practices became so bad that Mr. Jones was left with no choice other than to make a public plea on social media for Mr. Combs to pay him for his work. 123. After publicly requesting that Mr. Combs do the right thing and pay him fairly, Mr. Jones received an onslaught of threading messages from Stevie J and Love Records under DeForest Taylor 14. DeForest Taylor threatening Mr. Jones. Mr. Combs used his power and influence to threaten and intimidate Mr. Jones. 124. According to Mr. Jones, Mr. Combs is very forceful and demanding. 125. Mr. Combs does not take no for an answer and would often threaten to inflict bodily harm on Mr. Jones if Mr. Jones did not comply with his demands. 126. As detailed above, Mr. Combs threatened to eat Mr. Jones's face. 14. As the A&R of Love Records, DeForest Taylor did not require Mr. Jones or any of the other creatives, musicians, or artists to sign an NDA. On another occasion, while standing in Mr. Combs' bedroom, Mr. Jones was forced to watch as Mr. Combs displayed his guns and bragged about getting away with shooting people. 128. Mr. Combs shared that he was responsible for the shooting in the nightclub in New York City with rapper Shine. 129. He shared that artist and Mr. Combs' girlfriend at the time, Jennifer Lopez, also known as J-Lo carried the gun into the club for him and passed him the gun after he got into an altercation with another individual. 130. The shooting in Chalice Recording Studios confirmed Mr. Combs' statements. 131. These statements reinforced Mr. Jones's fear of Mr. Combs and strengthened Mr. Combs' dominion and control of Mr. Jones. 132. Mr. Jones was terrified of Mr. Combs. He felt like he could not tell him no. 133. Mr. Combs consistently made it clear that he has immense power in the music industry and with law enforcement. 134. Mr. Combs made it clear that his head of security, Fahim Mohammed, Mr. Mohammed, had the power to make people and problems disappear. Fahim Mohammed. 135. Mr. Combs instructs his staff to always contact Mr. Mohammed if they are ever pulled over by the police in Miami or California. 136. Upon information and belief, 
Mr. Muhammad spoke with the LAPD after G was shot at CRS. The LAPD was in CRS and witnessed the blood in the restroom. And they went with the bogus claim that the shooting of G occurred outside of the studio. This was all thanks to Mr. Muhammad's connections within law enforcement. 137. Mr. Jones had no reason to disbelieve Mr. Combs as he had seen firsthand through the shooting of G and the subsequent silence of the LAPD and the media that Mr. Combs indeed had the power to harm him. 138. The LAPD spent hours in CRS after the shooting of G, yet there were no arrests. Mr. Jones witnessed the LAPD in the restroom pictured above, yet no arrests were made. 139. The morning after the shooting, Mr. Jones and several others arrived at CRS and G's blood, was still on the floor of the restroom, and Mr. Combs hired a cleaning crew to clean it up. Defendants Ethiopia Habtamariam, Lucien Charles Grange, Motown Records, Love Records, and U-N-I-V-E-R-S-L-M-U-S-I-C-G-R-O-U-P aided, abetted, and profited off of Sean Combs Rico Enterprise. 140. Mr. Jones recalls seeing defendant Grange visiting Mr. Combs' home in Miami, Florida. And according to Mr. Jones, whenever defendant Grange visited Mr. Combs at his homes, it would be in the evening, and he and Mr. Combs would disappear for hours in Mr. Combs' bedroom. 142. Defendant Grange sponsored and attended several Love Album listening parties at Mr. Combs' home in Los Angeles, California. These parties were sponsored by defendants Mr. L.R. and U.M.G. As evidence above, these parties had sex workers and underage girls present. 143. During these parties, defendant Grange knew or should have known that Mr. Combs was drugging the attendees through laced bottles of De Leon tequila and Ciroc vodka. 144. It is no secret that Mr. Combs had specific bottles of alcohol designated for females and other bottles designated for his staff, his artists, and himself. This fact was detailed by former artists and bodyguards of Mr. Combs. 145. As a sponsor of these events, Defendant Grange had a duty and obligation to ensure that sex workers and underage girls were not present and that Mr. Combs was not spiking the alcohol with date rape drugs. 146. On YouTube channel, The Art of Dialogue, former bodyguard Gene Deal exposed Mr. Combs' pill mixing method used to spike cranberry juice and orange juice. According to Mr. Deal, Mr. Combs would place ecstasy and other date rape drugs in the juice C16. 147. On YouTube, The Art of Dialogue, Former artist Mark Curry exposed Mr. Combs spiking bottles of Moet champagne in the very important person section of nightclubs. Mr. Combs would have a set of Moet champagne bottles for his artists and a set for women 17. This writer has spoken with several former employees of Mr. Combs who witnessed defendant Coram instruct her staff to lay champagne, de Leon, and Ciroc liquor bottles with ecstasy and other illicit drugs. 149. Mr. Jones recalls seeing defendant Haptamarium visiting Mr. Combs' home in Miami, Florida, and Los Angeles, California, 150. According to Mr. Jones, whenever defendant Haptamarium visited Mr. Combs at his homes, it would be in the evening, and she and Mr. Combs would disappear for hours in Mr. Combs' bedroom, 151. According to Mr. Jones, defendant Haptamarium visited Mr. Combs at defendant CRS, during Mr. Combs' writing camp, 152, defendant Haptamarium sponsored and attended several love album listening parties at Mr. Combs' home in Los Angeles, California. These parties were sponsored by defendants Mr. L.R. and U.M.G. As evidence above, these parties had sex workers and underage girls present. 153. During these parties, defendant Haptamarium knew or should have known that Mr. Combs was drugging the attendees through laced bottles of De Leon tequila and Ciroc vodka, 154. As a sponsor of these events, defendant Habtamarium had a duty and obligation to ensure that sex workers and underage girls were not present and that Mr. Combs was not spiking the alcohol with date rape drugs. Defendant Christina Corum 
is the Ghislaine Maxwell to Sean Combs' Jeffrey Epstein, 155. According to Mr. Jones, during the 13 months he lived and traveled with Mr. Combs, he witnessed Mr. Combs display and distribute guns from his bedroom closet in Miami, Florida, and Los Angeles, California to questionable individuals dressed in all black. 156. According to Mr. Jones, during the 13 months he lived and traveled with Mr. Combs, he witnessed defendant Coram openly order her assistants to keep Mr. Combs high off gummies and pills 18. 157. Defendant Coram required all employees from the butler, the chef to the housekeepers, to walk around with a pouch or fanny pack filled with cocaine, DEB, ecstasy, marijuana gummies, 100 250 milligrams is each, and Tucci, a pink drug that is a combination of ecstasy and cocaine. Tucci, 158. It was important to defendant Coram to have Mr. Combs's drug of choice immediately, ready when he asks for it. 159. Defendant Coram ordered sex workers and prostitutes for Mr. Combs. 160. Defendant Coram ordered and distributed ecstasy, cocaine, DSB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms to Mr. Combs and his celebrity guests who were present on his rented yacht and in his homes in Louisiana, NYC, and Miami. 161. On multiple occasions, Defendant Coram forced Mr. Jones to carry Mr. Combs' drug pouch against his will. 162. D8. It was important to Defendant Coram to have Mr. Combs' drug of choice immediately, ready when he asks for it. 159. Defendant Coram ordered sex workers and prostitutes for Mr. Combs. 160. Defendant Coram ordered and distributed ecstasy, cocaine, DSB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms to Mr. Combs and his celebrity guests who were present on his rented yacht and in his homes in Louisiana, NYC, and Miami. 161. On multiple occasions, Defendant Coram forced Mr. Jones to carry Mr. Combs' drug pouch against his will. 162. As the Chief of Staff, Defendant Coram was instrumental in organizing and executing the RICO Enterprise. Defendant Coram had the following individuals execute the following tasks for the RICO Enterprise. A. Stevie J. Recruits sex workers and attends and participates in Freak Offs 19. B. Justin Combs solicits prostitutes, underage girls, and sex workers would engage in Freak Offs. C. Brendan Paul works as Mr. Combs' mule. He acquires and distributes Mr. Combs' drugs and guns. 18. We have a recording of this and will provide it to the court. 19. We have a video of Mr. Combs, Stevie J., and Plaintiff Jones at a strip club. Mr. Combs is recording the video while coaching and training Plaintiff Jones how to recruit the sex workers. Brendan Paul and Mr. Combs, D. Frankie Santalatwani, works alongside Brendan while Brendan acquires and distributes Mr. Combs' drugs and guns. Frankie carries the money and pays for the guns and drugs. Frankie Santella and Sean Combs, E. Moy Bon, hires sex workers, attends and participates in freak-offs. 20 Vice President of Music Management Andamp, Strategic Partnerships Vice President of Music Management Andamp, Strategic Partnerships, Combs Global. Moy Bon, Thanksgiving 2022 when Mr. Combs offered Mr. Jones cocaine, 163. Mr. Combs funded and used his affiliation with local gangs and gang leaders to anyone who would frequent his homes in Louisiana and Miami to secure the drugs and guns he obtained and distributed out of his homes in Louisiana and Miami. 164. Defendants executed their RICO enterprise with threats of violence, threatening to eat. Plaintiff's face, displaying and distributing guns in plaintiff's presence, bragging about having law enforcement under control, bragging about murdering people, and bragging about bribing witnesses and jurors in the criminal case concerning the 1999 NYC nightclub shooting with Shine. 165. Defendants executed their RICO enterprise with threats of isolation from the music and entertainment industry, parading powerful music industry executives such as defendants Lucien Charles Grange, Ethiopia Haptamarium at his parties filled with sex workers, minors, and illegal drugs, such as ecstasy, cocaine, DHB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms. 166. Defendants executed their RICO enterprise with threats of non-payment for work, 
Completed. Fake promises of cash payments, $250,000. Producer of the year Grammy Awards. And guaranteed access to future projects. And a $20 million dollar home on Star Island in Miami. 21 plaintiff has intentionally left the names and images of these individuals out of the pleading out of fear of retaliation. Mr. Combs is allowed to wreak havoc. 167. While living and traveling with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones discovered that Mr. Combs has hidden cameras in every room of his homes. 168. Mr. Jones believes that Mr. Combs has recordings of defendants Lucian Charles Grange, Ethiopia Haptamarium, as well as other celebrities, music label executives, politicians, and athletes. 169. Upon information and belief, these individuals were recorded without their knowledge and consent, and as is the case with the homosexual sex tape of Stevie J that Mr. Combs provided to Mr. Jones. Mr. Combs possesses compromising footage of every person that has attended his freak-off parties and his house parties. 170. Upon information and belief, due to this treasure trove of evidence he has in his possession, Mr. Combs believes that he is above the law and is untouchable. 171. Upon information and belief, Mr. Combs employs Jose Cruz as his IT director. This writer has spoken to several former employees of Mr. Combs who confirmed that Jose Cruz is the gatekeeper to all of Mr. Combs' recordings. 172. Upon information and belief, Jose Cruz intentionally hides behind the camera and from social media and the internet due to all of the incriminating acts he was required to record for Mr. Combs. First cause of action. Conduct and participate in a RICO enterprise through a pattern of racketeering activity. Violation of Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organization Act, codified at 18 U.S.C. 1962A, C.D. against Defendants Lucian Charles Grange, Ethiopia Habtamariam, Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Coram, Combs Global, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group, 173. Mr. Jones incorporates by reference all preceding paragraphs and realleges them as if set forth fully herein. 174. As Respondent Superior, Defendants Lucian Charles Grange, Ethiopia Habtamaria, Combs Global, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group, the Respondent Superior Collective, are 100% liable for the actions of Sean Combs, Justin Combs. Christina Coram, as they were acting in their capacities as the Respondent Superior Collectives. Employees when they committed the acts detailed below. The Respondent Superior Collective failed to adequately monitor, warn, or supervise the actions of Sean Combs, Justin Combs, and Christina Coram. 175. Defendants are individuals and or entities within the meaning of person as defined in 18. USC 1961-3 because each is capable of holding, and does hold, a legal or beneficial interest in property. The association is composed of Lucien Charles Grange, Ethiopia, Haptamariam, Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Coram, Combs Global, Motown, Records, Love Records, Universal Music Group, J-O-H-N, and J-A-N-E-D-O-E-C, and a B-C. Corporations 1-10, 176. Section 1962A makes it unlawful for any person who has received any income derived directly or indirectly from a pattern of racketeering activity or through a collection of an unlawful debt in which such person has participated as a principal within the meaning of Section 2, Title 18, United States Code to use or invest directly or indirectly any part of such income or the proceeds of such income in the acquisition of any interest in or the establishment or operation of any enterprise which is engaged in or the activities of which affect interstate or foreign commerce. 18 U.S.C. 1962A, 177, Section 1962, unlawful for any person employed by or associated with any enterprise engaged in or the activities of which affect interstate or foreign commerce to conduct or participate directly or indirectly in the conduct of such enterprises' affairs through a pattern of racketeering activity. 18 U.S.C. 1962 C. 178, 
Section 1962D makes it unlawful for any person to conspire to violate Section 1962 and C, among other provisions, 18 U.S.C. 1962D, 179. Defendants are associated with each other as an enterprise within the meaning of enterprise as defined in 18 U.S.C. 1000. 961 4 180 defendants have unlawfully increased their profits by luring and deceiving producers musicians writers creators and artists such as plaintiff to transport drugs ecstasy cocaine dhb ketamine marijuana and mushrooms transport firearms solicit minors exotic dancers sex workers and to utilize their talents and labor to produce music and other tangible goods and services without compensation. 181. The RICO enterprise, which all defendants have engaged in, and the activities of which affected interstate and foreign commerce, is comprised of an association, in fact, of persons, including each defendant and other unnamed co-conspirators. That association, in fact, was structured by various contracts and non-contractual relationships between the defendants by which defendants assumed different roles in agreeing to carry out a mail and wire fraud scheme to acquire drugs, firearms, prostitutes, minors, sex workers, and the labor of producers, musicians, writers, creators, and artists such as plaintiff to utilize their talents and labor to produce music and other tangible goods and services without compensation. 182. The members of the RICO enterprise all share a common purpose, to enrich themselves, financially and sexually at the expense of producers, musicians, writers, creators, and artists by maximizing defendants' revenues through fraudulent means. As set forth herein, defendants benefited financially from their scheme to defraud plaintiff by intimidating plaintiff with threats of violence, threatening to eat plaintiff's face, displaying and distributing guns in plaintiff's presence, bragging about having law enforcement under control, bragging about murdering people, and bragging about bribing witnesses and jurors in the criminal case concerning the 1999 NYC nightclub shooting with Shine, threats of isolation from the music and entertainment industry, parading powerful music industry executives such as defendants Lucien Charles Grange, Ethiopia Haptamarium at his parties filled with sex workers, minors, and illegal drugs such as ecstasy, cocaine, GSB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms, threats of non-payment for work completed, fake promises of cash payments, $250,000, producer of the year Grammy Awards, and guaranteed access to future projects, a $20 million dollar home on Star Island in Miami, which defendants would not have done but for the existence of the scheme. 183. The members of the RICO enterprise all share a common purpose, to enrich themselves, financially and sexually at the expense of producers, musicians, writers, creators, and artists by maximizing defendants' revenues through fraudulent means. As set forth herein, defendants benefited financially from their scheme to defraud plaintiff, including by making false representations that claim that loyalty and obedience to Mr. Combs will result in cash, payments, $250,000, Grammy Awards, access to future projects, access to famous celebrities, access to famous athletes, a $20 million home on Star Island in Miami, Promises that plaintiff can increase his chances of securing cash payments, $250,000, Grammy Awards, access to future projects, access to famous celebrities, access to famous athletes, a $20 million home on Star Island in Miami, by soliciting sex workers, by soliciting prostitutes, by engaging as homosexual acts, by distributing and transporting firearms, by distributing and transporting drugs, ecstasy, cocaine, GSB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms. By involuntarily sleeping with sex workers in the presence of Mr. Combs, and by utilizing their talents and labor to produce music and other tangible goods and services without compensation, which defendants would not have done, but for the existence of the scheme. 184. Upon information and belief, this RICO enterprise has existed for at least 20 years, dating back to the 1999 nightclub shooting in NYC when Mr. Combs required his then-girlfriend, Jennifer Lopez, to transport his illegal firearm into the NYC nightclub. Mr. Combs forced his then-artist, Shine, to assume responsibility for the shooting of several individuals. Mr. Combs used his power, money, and influence to bribe jurors and witnesses, 
such as the friend of the shooting victim, Natania Rubin, who reported to law enforcement that she saw Mr. Combs and not Shine pull the trigger and shoot her friend in the face. Natania Rubin later testified at Mr. Combs' criminal trial that she was tying her shoe and may not have seen who shot the gun. She later confessed that Mr. Combs paid her. 185. The RICO enterprise continued throughout the years, including during Mr. Combs's 10-year relationship with his girlfriend, Cassie Ventura. According to Ms. Ventura's civil complaint, this RICO enterprise continued in her relationship when Mr. Combs forced her to carry his gun in her purse, forced her to engage in unwanted sexual acts with male prostitute sex workers, forced her to consume dangerous amounts of ecstasy, cocaine, DJs, B, ketamine, marijuana and alcohol, and paying a member of his security team $5,000 to blow up the vehicle of Kid Cootie because he was jealous and insecure of their relationship. 186. The RICO enterprise continued from September 2022 to the present day, as evidenced by the hundreds of hours of video and audio recordings in plaintiff's possession, defendant Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Corum, his assistants and staff all orchestrated, participated, managed and executed the RICO enterprise by purchasing and distributing ecstasy, cocaine, GSB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms, by purchase and distributing firearms, by requiring the solicitation of sexual encounters with prostitutes, sex workers, and minors, and by forcing artists, creatives, musicians, and producers to utilize their talents and labor to produce music and other tangible goods and services without compensation. The RICO enterprise has functioned as a continuing unit and maintains an ascertainable structure separate and distinct from the pattern of racketeering activity. 487. The enterprise was characterized by the defendant's pattern of false representations and omissions made by defendants Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Corum, and other current and former members of the defendant's associates and staff to defendant's artists, creatives, musicians, and producers. These false representations and omissions were designed to induce defendant's artists, creatives, musicians, and producers to utilize their talents and labor to produce music and other tangible goods and services without compensation, as well as the solicitation of sexual encounters with prostitutes, sex workers, and minors, and the purchasing and distribution of illegal firearms and drugs. 188. As part of this scheme, defendants required their artists, creatives, musicians, and producers to visit strip clubs wearing exclusive authentic bad boy merchandise and to use the name and reputation of Mr. Combs to solicit sex workers and prostitutes. Additionally, Mr. Combs used the prospects of winning Grammy Awards, purchasing $20 million dollar homes, participating in future projects, making $250,000 cash payments, and meeting influential music industry executives such as defendants Lucien Charles Grange and Ethiopia Habtamarium. This pattern of false representations was disseminated to artists, creatives, musicians, and producers who reside in California, Florida, New York, and around the country by defendants based in California and New York under the direction and on behalf of defendants in New York. The dissemination typically used interstate telephone wires, social media messages, and electronic mail. 189. The true nature of defendant scheme was left undisclosed, was omitted, and or was affirmatively misrepresented, all to fraudulently increase defendant's profits, at least some of which were used to expand the enterprise, causing further injury to plaintiff Jones and other unwitting artists, creatives, musicians, and producers. 190. Defendants profited from the enterprise, and Plaintiff Jones suffered because the enterprise diminished Plaintiff Jones' finances due to 13 months of non-payment and diminished Plaintiff Jones' health through consistent drugging and forced sexual encounters with prostitutes and sex workers. Defendants used the proceeds from this scheme to advance the scheme by funding and operating their marketing machine, including through the use of the mail, social media, word of mouth and interstate wires to sell the illusion that Mr. Combs was serious about the talents and skills of the artists, creatives, musicians, and producers, and wanted to use those skills to make music when nothing could be further from the truth. Defendants provided their artists, creatives, musicians, and producers with this misrepresentative information, including via email all over interstate wireline communication systems and obtaining free labor, the distribution of drugs and firearms, 
as well as prostitutes, sex workers, and minors. Defendants obtained revenue via wire transfers, documents, and banking transactions that were exchanged via electronic means over interstate wires, thereby growing the enterprise and causing further injury to Plaintiff Jones as described throughout. 191. The defendant's scheme was reasonably calculated to deceive Plaintiff Jones, artists, creatives, musicians, and producers of ordinary prudence and comprehension through the execution of their complex and illegal scheme to misrepresent the effectiveness of soliciting prostitutes, sex workers, and minors and distributing drugs and guns that did not, would not, and could not lead to securing Grammy Awards, purchasing $20 million homes, participating on future projects, $250,000 cash payments, and meeting influential music industry executives such as defendants Lucian Charles Grange, and Ethiopia Haptamariam. Plaintiff Jones would not have lived with Mr. Combs for 13 months, missing birthdays, holidays, and family events, but for the illegal racketeering scheme operated by defendants. 192. Defendants each had the specific intent to participate in the overall RICO enterprise, and the scheme to defraud Plaintiff Jones, and each participated in the enterprise as follows. 193. Defendants Lucian Charles Grange, Ethiopia Haptamarium, Combs Global, Motown, Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group control and participate in the activities of the enterprise in a variety of ways as set forth herein, including but not limited to developing and marketing scores of writing camps and listening party services that are marketed to innocent, unassuming artists, creatives, musicians, and producers who are vulnerable and in seek of opportunities to work and share their craft. 194. Throughout the relevant period, defendants Lucy and Charles Grange, Ethiopia, Haptamarium, Combs Global, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group oversaw the activities of defendants Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Coram, and other current and former members of the defendants' associates and staff, collectively, individual defendants. Defendants Lucy and Charles Grange, Ethiopia Haptamarium, Combs Global, Motown Records, Love Records, in connection with defendants acting from New York, these defendants used the mail and interstate wires to solicit Plaintiff Jones and artists, creatives, musicians, and producers, and to use Plaintiff Jones and the artists, creatives, musicians, and producers to utilize their talents and labor to produce music and other tangible goods and services without compensation, as well as the solicitation of sexual encounters with prostitutes, sex workers, and minors, and the purchasing and distribution of illegal firearms and drugs. Each of these acts was undertaken, with the knowledge and approval of all other defendants in furtherance of the goals of their conspiracy. 196. Defend defendants committed multiple acts of mail fraud in violation of 18 U.S.C. 1341, in furtherance of the Enterprise 208. Defendants voluntarily and intentionally devised and participated in a scheme to defraud plaintiffs out of money, in reliance on the mail, second cause of action sexual assault and sexual harassment, against Mr. Combs, 221. Mr. Jones incorporates by reference all preceding paragraphs and realleges them as if set forth fully herein, 222. As described above, Mr. Combs frightened and placed plaintiff in apprehension of harm when he physically and sexually assaulted him from October 2022 to October 2023, in Mr. Combs' home in Miami, New York, United States Virgin Islands, and Los Angeles. 223. Mr. Combs forcibly touched and attempted and or threatened to touch plaintiff's intimate areas and or touched plaintiff with his own intimate body parts. 224. Mr. Combs violently gripped and palmed Mr. Jones' anus and crotch without consent. Mr. Combs forced Mr. Jones to work in Mr. Combs' bathroom and watch Mr. Combs as he showered. Mr. Combs forced Mr. Jones to work in the studio, while Mr. Combs stripped naked to get his body massaged. Mr. Combs forced Mr. Jones to work while Mr. Combs walked around naked. 225. As a result of Mr. Combs' conduct, plaintiff has suffered and continues to suffer harm, including physical injury, severe emotional distress, humiliation, anxiety, and other consequential damages for which he is entitled to an award of monetary damages and other relief. 226. The conduct of Mr. Combs described above was willful, wanton, and malicious at all. Relevant times, 
Mr. Combs acted with conscious disregard for plaintiff's rights and feelings, acted with the knowledge of or with reckless disregard for the fact that his conduct was certain to cause injury and or humiliation to plaintiff, and intended to cause fear, physical injury. 22 damages shall include, but not be limited to, all damages permitted under the New Jersey Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, and or pain and suffering to plaintiff. By virtue of the foregoing, plaintiff is entitled to recover punitive damages. Third cause of action, California's bystander negligent infliction of emotional distress against Mr. Combs and defendant Justin Combs, 227. Mr. Jones incorporates by reference all preceding paragraphs and realleges them as if set forth fully herein. 228. Mr. Jones brings this claim against Mr. Combs and J. Combs for the CRS shooting of G. The elements of bystander and IED are 1. is closely related to the injury victim, 2. is present at the scene of the injury producing event at the time it occurs, and is then aware that it is causing injury to the victim, and 3. as a result suffers serious emotional distress, a reaction beyond that which would be anticipated in a disinterested witness and which is not an abnormal response to the circumstances. Rava, Superior Court, 154 Cal, App, 4th, 142, 148, 64 Cal, RPTR, 3, 539, 542, 2007, 230. As detailed above, Mr. Jones was two feet away from Gigi, as either J. Combs or Mr. Combs shot him multiple times in the restroom of CRS. As detailed above, Mr. Jones was the only individual that aided GG as he laid on the bathroom floor in a fetal position bleeding out. As detailed above, Mr. Combs and J. Combs orchestrated a cover-up and threw Fahim Muhammad, lied to the LAPD, and forced Mr. Jones and all of the other attendees of the writer's camp to lie to the police as well. Mr. Combs and Jay Combs knew that they shot Gigi in the restroom and that Gigi was shot as he was leaving the studio. 231. Mr. Combs and Jay Combs' intentional deception caused a delay in G receiving immediate medical care as the ambulance parked three blocks away from CRS out of fear that there was an active shooting. Mr. Jones had to run down the block and convince them that the shooting had ended. 232. These events traumatized Mr. Jones. It caused Mr. Jones to suffer from insomnia, PTSD, severe anxiety, and depression. Additionally, the fear and silence from the remaining witnesses aided in the reinforcement of Mr. Combs' statements that he is untouchable. 233. As a result of Mr. Combs and J. Combs' conduct, Plaintiff Jones has suffered and continues to suffer harm, including severe emotional distress, anxiety, and other consequential damages for which he is entitled to an award of monetary damages and other relief. 234. The conduct of Mr. Combs and J. Combs described above was willful, wanton, and malicious. At all relevant times, Mr. Combs and J. Combs acted with conscious disregard for plaintiff's rights and feelings, acted with the knowledge of or with reckless disregard for the fact that their conduct was certain to cause injury to plaintiff, and intended to cause fear, physical injury and or pain and suffering to plaintiff. By virtue of the foregoing, plaintiff is entitled to recover punitive damages. Fourth cause of action, sexual assault against Jane Doe 1, Young Miami's cousin, 235. Mr. Jones incorporates by reference all preceding paragraphs and realleges them as if set. Fourth fully herein, 236. As described above, Jane Doe 1 frightened and placed plaintiff in apprehension of harm when she physically and sexually assaulted him on Thanksgiving Day 2022 in Mr. Combs' home in Miami, Florida. 237. Jane Doe 1 forcibly touched and attempted and or threatened to touch plaintiff's intimate areas and or touched plaintiff with her own intimate body parts. Jane Doe 1 used her mouth and performed oral sex on plaintiff while he was urinating in the restroom. Plaintiff fought her off while Mr. Combs and his associates sat outside loudly laughing. Jane Doe 1 then followed Mr. Jones outside of the restroom and began undressing in front of Mr. Combs and his associates, straddled Mr. Jones and attempted to enforce sexual intercourse with him. 238. As a result of Jane Doe One Foot's conduct, plaintiff has suffered and continues to suffer harm, including physical injury, severe emotional distress, humiliation, 
anxiety, and other consequential damages for which he is entitled to an award of monetary damages and other relief. 239. The conduct of Jane Doe 1 described above was willful, wanton, and malicious. At all relevant times, Jane Doe 1 acted with conscious disregard for plaintiff's rights and feelings, acted with the knowledge of, or with reckless disregard for the fact that her conduct was certain to cause injury and or humiliation to plaintiff, and intended to cause fear, physical injury and or pain, and suffering to plaintiff. By virtue of the foregoing, plaintiff is entitled to recover punitive damages. Fifth cause of action. Premises liability for the sexual assault committed by Jane Doe 1, Young Miami's cousin, against Mr. Combs, 240, Mr. Jones incorporates by reference all preceding paragraphs and re-alleges them as if set forth fully herein. 241. Mr. Jones was sexually assaulted by Jane Doe 1 in Miami, Florida on Thanksgiving 2022. Mr. Combs was present while Mr. Jones was being assaulted by Jane Doe 1. Mr. Jones was legally on the premises as a guest and invitee of Mr. Combs. Jane Doe 1 was legally on the premises as a guest and invitee of Mr. Combs. Mr. Combs owned the premises and had dominion and control over the premises where Mr. Jones was harmed. Mr. Combs had dominion and control over the actions of Jane Doe 1 and failed to step in and stop Jane Doe 1 from sexually assaulting Mr. Jones. 242. As the owner of the property, Mr. Combs had a duty to protect Mr. Jones from the harm he suffered at the hands of Jane Doe 1. Mr. Combs breached his duty when he failed to stop Jane Doe 1 from sexually assaulting Mr. Jones. In furtherance of this breach, Mr. Combs was laughing and encouraging Jane Doe 1 to continue her assault of Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones has suffered immensely because of Mr. Combs' intentional breach of his duty to him. 243. As a result of Mr. Combs' breach of his duty, Mr. Jones has suffered and continues to suffer harm, including severe emotional distress, anxiety, and other consequential damages for which he is entitled to an award of monetary damages and other relief. 244. The conduct of Mr. Combs described above was willful, wanton, and malicious. At all. Relevant times, Mr. Combs acted with conscious disregard for plaintiff's rights and feelings. Acted with the knowledge of or with reckless disregard for the fact that their conduct was certain to cause injury to plaintiff, and intended to cause fear, physical injury and or pain and suffering to plaintiff. By virtue of the foregoing, plaintiff is entitled to recover punitive damages. Sixth cause of action. Premises liability for the sexual assault committed by Cuba Gooding Jr. against Mr. Combs, 245. Mr. Jones incorporates by reference all preceding paragraphs and re-alleges them as if set forth fully herein. 246. Here, Mr. Jones was sexually assaulted by Cuba Gooding Jr. on a yacht rented by Mr. Combs in the U.S. Virgin Islands in January 2023. Mr. Combs was present while Mr. Jones was being assaulted by Cuba Gooding Jr. Mr. Jones was legally on the premises as a guest and invitee of Mr. Combs. Cuba Gooding Jr. was legally on the premises as a guest and invitee of Mr. Combs. Mr. Combs owned, through renting, the premises and had dominion and control over the premises where Mr. Jones was harmed. Mr. Combs had dominion and control over the actions of Cuba Gooding Jr. and failed to step in and stop Cuba Gooding Jr. from sexually assaulting Mr. Jones. 247. As the owner of the property, Mr. Combs had a duty to protect Mr. Jones from the harm he suffered at the hands of Cuba Gooding Jr. Mr. Combs breached his duty when he failed to stop Cuba Gooding Jr. from sexually assaulting Mr. Jones. In furtherance of this breach, Mr. Combs encouraged Cuba Gooding Jr. to continue his assault of Mr. Jones when he said that Cuba Gooding Jr. should privately get to know Mr. Jones better. Mr. Jones has suffered immensely because of Mr. Combs' intentional breach of his duty to him. 248. As a result of Mr. Combs' breach of his duty, Mr. Jones has suffered and continues to suffer. Harm, including severe emotional distress, anxiety, and other consequential damages for which he is entitled to an award of monetary damages and other relief. 249. The conduct of Mr. Combs described above was willful, wanton, and malicious at all. Relevant times, Mr. Combs acted with conscious disregard for plaintiff's rights and feelings, acted with the knowledge of or with reckless disregard for the fact that their conduct was certain to cause injury to plaintiff, and intended to cause fear, 
physical injury and or pain and suffering to plaintiff. By virtue of the foregoing, plaintiff is entitled to recover punitive damages. Seventh cause of action trafficking and victims protection act against defendant Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Corum, and Combs Global. 250. Mr. Jones incorporates by reference all preceding paragraphs and re-alleges them as if set forth fully herein. 251. Defendants Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Corum, and Combs Global knowingly and intentionally participated in, perpetrated, assisted, supported, facilitated a sex trafficking venture that was in and affecting interstate and foreign commerce, together and with others, in violation of 18 U.S.C. 1000. 590, Wanda, 1, 252. Among other things, defendants Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Corum, and Combs Global knowingly and intentionally recruited, enticed, provided, obtained, advertised, and solicited by various means Mr. Jones, as well as other class members, knowing that defendants Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Corum, and Combs Global would use means of force, threats of force, fraud, coercion, and a combination of such means to cause Mr. Jones, as well as others, some of whom were under the age of 17, to engage in commercial sex acts. 253. Defendants Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Corum, and Combs Global and its employees had actual knowledge that they were perpetrating and facilitating Mr. Combs' sexual abuse and sex trafficking conspiracy to recruit, solicit, entice, coerce, harbor, transport, obtain and provide Mr. Jones as well as others whom were under the age of 17 into commercial sex acts through the means of force, threats of force, fraud, abuse of process, and coercion. 254. Despite such knowledge, defendants Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Corum, and Combs Global intentionally paid for, facilitated, perpetrated, and participated in Mr. Combs' violations of 18 U.S.C., 1591A1, which defendants Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Corum, and Combs Global knew, and were in reckless disregard of the fact that Mr. Combs would coerce, defraud, and force Mr. Jones to engage in commercial sex acts. 255. Defendants Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Corum, and Combs Global's actions were in and affecting interstate and foreign commerce including its music distributing and publishing activities, which were in and affecting interstate and foreign commerce. 256. By taking the concrete steps alleged in this complaint, defendants Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Corum, and Combs Global knowingly participated in sex trafficking and furthered the Combs sex trafficking venture. The concrete steps constituted taking part in the sex trafficking venture and were necessary for its success. The concrete steps constituted active engagement by defendants Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Corum, and Combs Global in Mr. Combs's sex trafficking venture. Defendants Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Corum, and Combs Global knew that its active engagement would lead to and cause coercive commercial sex trafficking. 257. As part of perpetrating TVPA violations between on or about September 12, 2022, and through about November 2023, defendants Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Corum, and Combs Global concealed its delivery of hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash to Mr. Combs and his associates. 258. As part of perpetrating TVPA violations, defendants Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Corum, and Combs Global also willfully failed to file required taxes with the federal government. 259. Defendants Sean Combs, this case does not involve mere fraud. Instead, defendants Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Corum, and Combs Global's criminal conduct in perpetrating TVPA violations was outrageous and intentional because it was in deliberate furtherance of a widespread and dangerous criminal sex trafficking organization. Defendants Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Corum, and Combs Global's criminal conduct also evinced a high degree of moral turpitude and demonstrated such wanton dishonesty as to imply criminal indifference to civil obligations. Defendants Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Corum, and Combs Global's criminal conduct was directed specifically at Mr. Jones who was the victim of Mr. Combs' sexual abuse and sex trafficking. Harassment. 263. 
Defendants Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Corum, and Combs Globals. Outrageous and intentional conduct in this case is part of a pattern and practice of defendants Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Corum, and Combs Global profiting by undertaking illegal high-risk, high-reward actions, obstruction of the enforcement of the trafficking victim. Protection Act, 18 U.S.C., 1591 and D, against defendants Lucien Charles Grange, Ethiopia Haptamarium, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group, 319. Mr. Jones incorporates by reference all preceding paragraphs and realleges them as if set forth fully herein. 320. Defendants Lucien Charles Grange, Ethiopia Haptamarium, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group and its officers and employees knowingly and intentionally obstructed, attempted to obstruct, interfered with, and prevented the enforcement of 18 U.S.C. 1591 A1 and AMP. A, t, all in violation of 18 U.S.C. 1591 D. This activity is hereinafter referred to collectively simply as obstruction. 321. Defendants Lucien Charles Grange, Ethiopia Haptamarium, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group's obstruction of the enforcement of 18 U.S.C. 1591 A1 and A2 was forbidden by 18 U.S.C. 1591 D. And defendants Lucien, defendant Sean Combs has a well-documented history of criminal investigations. Defendants Lucien Charles Grange, Ethiopia Haptamarium, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group were on notice of Mr. Combs' proclivity to criminal activity. They knew or should have known that Mr. Combs' sex trafficking operation would or could result in a criminal investigation by state and federal prosecutors for violating, among other laws, the TVPA. Defendants Lucy and Charles Grange, Ethiopia Habdamariam, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group should have taken a key from the federal prosecutor's arrest and prosecution of Jeffrey Epstein on or about July 8, 2019. On or about that date, the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York indicted Epstein and unnamed associates for violating the TVPA. Later, on June 29, 2020, the same office indicted Epstein's company conspirator, Ghislaine Maxwell, for conspiracy to entice minor victims to travel to be abused by Epstein. Mr. Combs, defendants J. Combs, Coram and her direct reports, Brendan Paul, Frankie Santella, and Moy Bon all engaged in the same activities as Mr. Epstein and Ms. Maxwell. In fact, Mr. Combs, defendants Jay Combs, Coram and her direct reports, Brendan Paul, Frankie Santella, and Moy Bon may have done worse. By providing financing for Mr. Combs' sex trafficking organization and concealing its actions thereafter, defendants Lucy and Charles Grange, Ethiopia Haptamarium, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group obstructed, interfered with, and prevented the state and federal government enforcement of the TVPA against Mr. Combs, defendants J. Combs, Coram and her direct reports, Brendan Paul, Frankie Santella, and Moy Bon. To the extent that the federal government was able to ultimately charge Mr. Combs, defendants J. Combs, Coram and her direct reports, Brendan Paul, Frankie Santella, and Moy Bon with TVP of violations. The filing of those charges was delayed by defendants Lucien Charles Grange, Ethiopia Haptamarium, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group's actions. Because of that delay, Mr. Jones was coercively caused to engage in commercial sex acts. 324. As one example of how defendants Lucien Charles Grange, Ethiopia Haptamarium, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group obstructed, attempted to obstruct, interfered with, and prevented state and federal government's enforcement of the TVPA. Defendants Lucy and Charles Grange, Ethiopia Haptamarium, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group provided large amounts of cash to Mr. Combs and his associates so that the coercive commercial sex acts would escape the detection of state and federal law enforcement and prosecuting agencies. Defendants Lucien Charles Grange, Ethiopia Habtamarium, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group provided large amounts of cash to further the Mr. Combs. Defendants J. Combs, 
Coram, and her direct reports. Brendan Paul, Frankie Santella, and Moy Bond's sex trafficking venture, and with the purpose of helping Mr. Combs, defendants Jay Combs, Coram, and her direct reports. Brendan Paul, Frankie Santella, and Moy Bond evade criminal liability by providing large amounts of cash to Mr. Combs and his associates, defendants Lucian, Charles Grange, Ethiopia Haptamarium, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group intended and knew that Mr. Combs' coercive commercial sex acts would escape the detection of law, enforcement, and prosecuting agencies for some period of time. Defendants Lucian 334. This case does not involve mere fraud. Instead, defendants Lucian Charles Grange, Ethiopia Haptamarium, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group's criminal conduct and obstructing enforcement of the TVPA was outrageous and intentional because it was 335. By virtue of these violations of 18 U.S.C. 1591 G, <laughs> defendants Lucian Charles Grange, Ethiopia Haptamarium, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group is liable to Mr. Jones for the damages he sustained and reasonable attorney's fees by operation of 18 U.S.C. 1,595. Defendants Lucian Charles Grange, Ethiopia Haptamarium, Motown. Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group perpetrated an obstruction of the TVPA, and therefore perpetrated a violation of Chapter 77, Title 18. Prayer for Relief. Wherefore, plaintiff prays that the court enter judgment in her favor and against defendants, containing the following relief. A. A declaratory judgment that the actions conduct, and practices of defendants. Complained of herein violate the laws of the state of New York. B. An award of damages against defendant in an amount to be determined at trial, plus prejudgment interest, to compensate plaintiff for all monetary and or economic damages, including, but not limited to, loss of past and future income, wages, compensation, seniority, and other benefits of employment. C. An award of damages against defendant in an amount to be determined at trial, plus prejudgment interest to compensate plaintiff for all non-monetary and or compensatory damages, including, but not limited to, compensation for her mental anguish, humiliation, embarrassment, stress and anxiety, emotional pain and suffering, and emotional distress, a D, an award of punitive damages, in an amount to be determined at trial, E, prejudgment interest on all amounts due, F, an award of cost that plaintiff has incurred in this action, including, but not limited, to expert witness fees, as well as plaintiff's reasonable attorney's fees and costs to the fullest extent permitted by law, and g, such other and further relief as the court may deem just and proper. Jury demand. Plaintiff hereby demands a trial by jury on all issues of fact and damages stated herein. Dated. <laughs>